Hey everyone, my name is Anthony Doze. I'm the senior pastor at Bethany Evangelical Missionary Church in Kitchener, and I'm here to share with you some discipleship ideas and some principles that I believe will really help us in following Christ. I'm going to call this the pathway to discipleship, and today specifically, I want to kind of give a general overview of that path. Today we're going to specifically look at how God wants to bring transformation to our lives, how He wants to transform our heart, transform our lifestyle. And the vision at Bethany Church is to lead people into a transforming relationship with Jesus Christ. So transformation is at the heart of our church's vision. And so let me begin by expanding on that idea and looking at it. I want you to think of the word heart, H-E-A-R-T, and we'll walk through those ideas. When we become Christians, our desire to become like Christ, to follow Christ, and to grow into His image and stature is something that God places on the inside, that desire that comes from God. And then God draws us, just like He did at salvation, He draws us to Himself to continually grow in all areas of our lives. He doesn't just want us to receive salvation like a ticket to heaven. He wants that Word and that life and the Spirit that He gives us to transform our lives here and now. One day heaven, certainly, but God wants to be involved in our lives every day. So let me just begin by saying, what's next after you receive Christ? Wonderful, by the way, congratulations on your commitment to following Jesus as your Savior and Lord and by accepting His Lordship in your life. So congratulations on that. But let me, as a pastor, then help you with next steps. I'm talking about the path that's laid before you that you can follow. How does this happen in my life? And how does this happen in your life? It's by a decision that we, we thank God that He saved us and that we want to follow Him. So let me take a look at that path to heart transformation with you today. And we're going to walk through a step-by-step -step process. Number one, the word heart, let's use the letter H to begin. And so this is so important. It's called hearing. So hearing is the first step in transformation. The Word of God is very clear that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the Word of Christ, the Word of the Lord. It is the first step. And in order to hear God's Word, we need to be a person who focuses on the Bible and on prayer, both things working together. The Bible is God's Word to us, and prayer is the way for God to speak to our hearts. Prayer is not just us talking to God, giving Him our prayer request. Prayer is actually about relationship. We'll go into more detail in another time, but right now I want to talk to you about this initial step of hearing, because faith is the result of God's Word being heard in your life. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Again, I'll say, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the Word of God. And we can start doing this at any time, anywhere. To be honest with you, having the Bible in your life and spending time in prayer is actually going to become quite natural for you. You're going to go to the Word of God and you're going to be praying, not just on Sundays and not just at a Bible study, but it's actually going to become part of your lifestyle. And so you're going to wait for opportunities to hear from God in your Bible time and in your prayer time. And so we're going to uh, believe that God will help us not to stray from that desire that He's placed inside of us to go ahead and engage with Him. So the good news is, even if we haven't done that before, we can pick up a Bible, we can stop and pause in our day to pray, and at any time, no condemnation. I don't want you to feel any kind of guilt. You just pick up that Bible and re-engage once again and hear from God's Word. If the God of the universe who created all things and who created you uh, loves you enough to want to speak to you, then we should be willing to want to hear from Him. And that's really important. And so as God's transforming our heart, hearing is key. And let me ask you this question. Uh, do we want this for our lives? Do we want to hear from God? Um, both by ourselves and with other believers around us, God gives us opportunities to hear from Him. So church is important, fellowship with other believers is important, but also in your personal quiet time, it's important. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 says this, 
all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the sharing of meals, which includes the Lord's Supper, communion together, which is really a huge part of a believer's walk. It's now joining with other believers and having and sharing communion, the Lord's Supper, the Lord's table with them, and to prayer. So Acts 2.42 is a great model for us to look at all the different ways that God can speak to us and we can hear from Him. All right, so that's number one. Number two uh, is E, engaging. So hearing, now engaging. Because it's not just good enough to hear from God. We now need to engage and pay attention to what God is saying. So when we read and when we pray, we have to engage our heart in what God is speaking to us. And we have to get to a place where we are receiving what God is saying and not just have an idea in our mind and have mental assent or agreement with what we hear, but we now need to engage our heart and we need this truth to speak to us. This is not just a good idea. This is not just a pastor giving you a suggestion. This actually is something that you need. We need to hear from God and then we need to engage our hearts with the truth that we find and understand it as well. Colossians chapter 1 verse 23 gives us this uh, big idea. And it begins by saying, but you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it, engage in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. Wow, what a, a tremendous Bible verse for you. So let's go to number three. Number three um, in H. E-A in the word heart, A is accepting. So we're hearing from God through prayer and through spending time in his word, and then we're engaging in the truth that God's asking us to consider, to understand, and then to apply to our lives. And then what we need to do is we need to accept it, that this is God's truth for us, and then begin to implement it in our lives. Living the truth will change you when we accept it. Again, like I mentioned earlier, we don't just want to agree with it. We need to accept it. I could use the word agreement, but we need more than agreement. We need acceptance of what God is saying and to internalize what we hear. Accepting the truth means we are removing the lies and all the things that compete with this truth. And we, we let God's word, what we hear from him, be supreme in our lives. And the truth that we heard through God's word and through prayer absolutely needs, needs to take paramount. It needs to be the number one priority as you allow God to transform you. See, we're talking about transformation. And all of these steps, this path to transformation, requires engagement from you. Hearing, correct, then engaging your heart and trying to understand what God is saying. And then accepting the truth that God speaks to you as such an important thing. And this is really clear in John chapter 1, verse 12. Uh, this is when we become children, God's children. It's, it's, a, it's amazing. You watch this together. When we really actually start the process of being changed is found in John 1, verse 12. It says, But to all who believed him and accepted him, See, it's great to believe in God, but now we accept him in our lives like we accept his word. He gave the right to become children of God. An authority comes, a, actually a certainty comes that we are children of God. I've met so many people who accept Christ in their life, who give their lives to the Lord, ask for forgiveness of their sins, but this is where they struggle. They don't have the assurance of salvation or the assurance that they are part of the family of God. And this says that those who believe him and accept him now have the right to call themselves children of God. It's a huge shift and it will transform your heart and your life. Next thing we look at is receiving. So if we're looking at the word heart and we see R as receiving, it might seem like it's accepting, but let me go a little further with not just accepting that truth in our lives. We need to receive the healing that that truth brings us. I could actually entitle this whole thing, transformation from hearing to healing. This is actually the process. 
we hear God's word, we know what he wants for our lives, we begin to engage with it, accept it into our lives, and then we receive the healing that comes from that truth. Um, this is where his word takes hold of our hearts and really starts to bring about amazing change. In my own life, this is what happened. And I began to notice, actually, other people noticed before I began to notice how I was actually growing and changing. And so we see that, that the, the truth of God's word brings a radical change into the broken air of our lives and we're healed. God is near the brokenhearted. He is near those who are contrite. He loves to heal and restore the brokenhearted. And this is what God wants to do. He wants to restore and heal your heart. We could have entitled uh, the letter R here. We could have called it restoring. And this is exactly the process of healing. God begins to, as we receive his healing, God begins to restore us. Our thought patterns are straightened out. We, we, our minds become renewed through the Word of God. Um, our old habits are replaced with new habits. And you begin to see that in your life as well. And then we have this healing through the truth of Jesus that begins to transform every part of our lives. Not just our spirit, not just our heart, but every part of our lives. Our heart, our minds, our bodies, all begin to see transformation, and that's a beautiful thing. But again, you must receive. John 8, 32 says this, you will know the truth, receive the truth, and the truth that you know, the truth will set you free. So the truth that you receive is what will bring healing in your life, will bring freedom from addictions and bondage and all the torments of the enemy. God will deliver you and heal you as you receive the healing through this beautiful word from the Lord. And the last thing is the letter T in the word heart. And let me tell you what that means. Transformation, obviously. That was the path to transformation. So when we start this healing process and all the different areas of life, when we receive his healing, he begins to restore us in every area of our lives. We then can look at the transformation that is taking place. And it will continue until we are transformed in every area, till we're different people. We're no longer in darkness. We're now in the kingdom of light. And this is a beautiful pathway to God restoring and transforming and healing your life. We will notice it. As your pastor, I'll notice that transformation in your life. And eventually your family members will notice this transformation. And you too will notice the transformation. And you can see and truly say, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was in darkness, but now I'm in light. I once was dead, but now I'm alive. And the transformation will be evident. Look at Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And it says, We will no longer be conformed to this world, the patterns of this world, the habits of this world, but we'll be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So our hearts will be renewed we will be transformed. It's a beautiful thing. So as I close this idea today, let me just speak to you about embracing this whole overflowing process. God's not looking for protect, perfection. He's looking for your participation, your openness to allow him to bring this transformation in your life. I'm so excited. I'm so glad you're listening to this message today. Because just like in my life and countless multitudes, millions and millions of, of other Christians have been transformed when God's word brings, when we hear God's word, he brings transformation and healing into our lives. And so Romans chapter 15, verse 13 is a powerful scripture. This is may the God of hope, you have great hope here, fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? Let me read that again. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so you may overflow with hope and by the power of the Holy Spirit. So this healing, this love, this hope, this peace, all these things will begin to overflow in your life. And this is the process of discipleship. This is the path for heart transformation. 
that you're becoming more like Jesus over and over and over. Every day it's possible, little by little, he's changing you. And that is good news. If you are a disciple, then you're going to be different. If you're a disciple of Jesus, then you're going to be different than who you were. God will bring you into a new creation reality. Um, You're going to be different than who you used to be. You're going to have to get used to not being who you used to be. If you are not different after following Jesus, then let me ask you, let let me give you a little heart check here. There's something amiss. There's something not right. Is there part of this heart transformation thing that you're not really uh, plugged into? Are you hearing from God? Are you engaging in what he's speaking to you? Are you accepting that truth in your life? And then receiving the healing that comes from receiving what God has for you? And is transformation being evident? If any of those pieces are missing, then I would ask you to consider, let's review. Let's look over these things. And so we see our heart God has a plan and a path for us to follow. The Bible says, without God, the man's heart is desperately wicked. Who, who can understand it? But in Christ, the heart can be transformed, and you can be renewed in that area of your life. So then take some time and pray specifically about whatever area you might be struggling in of those those five areas that I just shared with you, and ask God to show you in his word what you need. Ask somebody to give you some advice, some counsel. If you're struggling in any of those areas to help you, to to disciple you into this path of transformation and so that you can break through that hindrance or what area that you're struggling in so that you can, with the bottom line, become more like Jesus. Thank you for letting me share with you today. I'm so glad we have other teachings that are coming along and we just go ahead and follow at your pace. Uh, those things. But today begins the transformation of our heart uh, from hearing to healing. What a beautiful thing. And for every single one of us, it's the hope that we can have in God. God bless. We'll talk to you again real soon.